Hey guys, my name is Pixie and this is part two of the Math Whiz Quiz, where we'll generate random math questions and answers to make our quiz different every time. So let's get started with the blocks editor for this app. Let's start with three optional global variables. Call these questions, range, and max. Set questions to 10. As the name suggests, this will be the number of questions in your quiz. Set range to 15 and set max to 100. You can customize these values, but we'll talk more about what they mean later on. Next, we'll need three more global variables that will be used to pass values between procedures and events. Call these T, result, and answer. Default T and answer to zero and set result to an empty text block. We need two more global variables, call these button list and answer list. Then set both variables to an empty list. Now we can create the initialize list procedure. We only need to populate the button list. There are four buttons on the screen within the table arrangement, so this list needs to have four items. Insert the name of each button one through four. Next, create a procedure called generate question. We'll need four local variables in this procedure. Name these operator, A, B, and sign. The operator will get a random number from one to four. Variable A will get a random number from one to global max. Remember we had set that value earlier to 100, so this will be a random number from one to 100. Copy and paste that into the value for B, then set sign to a blank text block. The purpose of this procedure is to generate a random math equation, but we need to figure out what that equation will be. We can use a condition block with four conditions. Each condition will be based on the random number of operator. So if the operator is one, we'll perform addition. If the operator is two, we'll perform subtraction. If the operator is three, we'll perform multiplication. And if the operator is four, we'll perform division. And I bet you can guess what we're gonna do next. If the operator is one, then the answer will be A plus B. Otherwise, the answer is A minus B, or the answer is A times B, or the answer is A divided by B. We can also set the sign for each operator. In my text box, I have a space before the addition sign and a space after the addition sign. This will just help our string formatting look a little cleaner. Set the sign for each operator. For multiplication, it's up to you if you want to use the asterisk symbol or a lowercase x. Division is usually represented by a forward slash on the computer. Also keep in mind that division could get a little messy. For example, let's say the random number for A is 56 and the random number for B is 72. 56 divided by 72 is 0 0.7777777 forever. And that's the value that would appear as one of the possible answers. If you round the answer, it would just appear as zero. I will go ahead and round the division answer, but I'll leave that up to you. To finish off this procedure, we'll need to output the equation so that the user can see it. Set label math.txt to join A, sign, and B. This will allow us to generate a random math equation every time, so it keeps things interesting for the user, and it was pretty easy, right? Time to generate the answers that appear on each of the four buttons. Start with a local variable named correct button index and set it to a random integer from one to the length of button list. We know that button list only has four buttons, but you may remember me saying from previous videos that you don't want to get in the habit of hard coding values, especially values that can change like the length of a list. Now we need to numerically iterate through the button list starting with the first index in the list and ending on the last index of the list. We need three local variables inside this loop. Call these rand, operator, and wrong answer. Rand will be set to a random integer from one to global range, which we set earlier as 15. Recall that global max is set to 100. So when we generate the equation, A and B are both any random number from one to 100. So let's say A is 20 and B is 30. And let's say the random operator chosen in the generate questions procedure is one. So the equation is 20 plus 30. One of the four answer buttons should say 50 because that would be the answer. We need to also generate three wrong answers that are close to the number 50. So we set a range of 15 to find a random wrong answer that is somewhere in the ballpark of 50. In this procedure, the operator is going to be a random number from one to two. 
To finish off these variables, default wrong answer to zero. During the loop, we need a condition to determine if I equals the correct button index, because we also have to randomly assign where the answer is going to appear on each button during each new question. The answers can't always be on the same button. All right, so if I equals the correct button index, then we'll add global answer to the answer list. Now the answer list is going to be a list that stores all of the possible answers for the current question. So let's say that the correct button index is three. So button three will display the correct answer and index three in the answer list will also display the correct answer. Let's add a cheat mode to this quiz so we can make sure that if we click on a button that that is in fact the correct answer. We can set any button.text color to blue, so the correct answer will appear in blue text on the correct button. Now keep in mind you don't want to have this block when you build your app, especially if this is an education app. But as a developer, sometimes you need to give yourself god mode to make sure your stuff works. And then you have games like The Sims where players actually can enter cheat mode. But in this case, this block is just here for testing purposes. Now, if I is any number other than the correct button index, we need to generate a wrong answer. We also need to copy and paste the cheat mode block and set the text color back to white. So all wrong answers will be white. The correct answer is bright blue. If the operator is two, then rewrite the operator to the value negative one. Grab the set wrong answer block and place it underneath the operator condition. Leave this as is, we'll come back to it in just a second. Copy and paste the cheat mode block below the main condition. Change text color to text and delete the white color. Instead, the text for each button should match the current index in answer list. We're not quite finished there, but we do need to create a result procedure called check wrong answer with two arguments called random and operator. Before we create this procedure, make a call to check wrong answer as the value for wrong answer. The random argument is answer plus rand, but remember the wrong answer needs to be greater than or equal to the correct answer. So we actually need to multiply the operator by rand. Again, let's pretend the answer is 50. The operator is one and rand is five. You guys know that any number times one is that number. So one times five is five. So 50 plus five is 55. If the operator is two, we rewrote the operator as negative one because a negative times a positive is a negative. This would allow us to subtract five from 50. So the wrong answer would be 45. And we'll pass the operator through this procedure as well. So we don't have to redo it. So what does this procedure actually do? It's possible for the computer to generate the same number twice, meaning we could have two buttons with identical answers. That would be very confusing for our user. Under control, you'll find a do result block. We need to perform a while loop that checks to see if random already exists in the answer list. If it does exist, then we need to generate a brand new random number. The great thing about the while loop is in this case, it will keep generating a random number until it gets a unique number. It might get a unique number on the first try and the loop will end. It might take three tries to get a unique number, but it will help to ensure that every wrong answer that appears on each button is different. Once we get our random number, we set global result to the value of random and we add the value result to the answer list. To finish this procedure, we return the value of result. So whatever that result is will be the value of wrong answer. We can create a simple procedure called new question. In this procedure, update int question.txt to the value of int question.txt plus one. Remember that int score and int question are both set to zero by default. So the very first question will say one. Then we need to call generate question and generate answers to finish this procedure. Create another procedure named check user answer with an argument named index. In a local variable, set user answer to select the requested index from answer list. If user answer equals global answer, that means the user guessed correctly. So let's update int score.txt to the current value of int score.txt plus 10, meaning that each question is worth 10 points. Feel free to do a simple mathematical calculation for the points if you want. I'm just gonna say 10 for simplicity's sake. Each time we check to see if the user answered correctly, 
we also need to check to see if we're on the very last question of the quiz. So if int questions text is the same as global question, then we need to loop through the button list and disable every button. We do this immediately so the user doesn't accidentally click on something else and break the program. Outside of the loop, we can enable the clock timer. For every other question that is not the last question, we need to reset the answer list so that it's a fresh list for the next question and then we make a call to new question. Now we gotta make all of this work. When screen one starts, call initialize lists and new question. Also set label question.text to display the total number of questions. For example, int question will say one and label question will say slash 10, meaning you're currently on question one of 10. I've added a space before and after the forward slash, so there's some room between the two numbers. Let's take advantage of the built-in menu. Grab screen one dot initialize menu and clear all of the default menu items. We'll then create our own menu item called new quiz. This will allow us to start a brand new quiz at any time. Grab screen one dot menu item select. If menu item equals new quiz, then we need to reset the screen. If the user clicks on new quiz once the quiz has ended, then all of the buttons will be disabled. So we need to just loop back through the button list and re-enable those buttons. And we're doing that just in case they were disabled. Answer list also needs to be reset to an empty list. Int score.txt should be reset to zero. And int question.txt should also be reset to zero. We can start generating a new question, but we also need to make sure our containers are displayed properly. Container game over dot visible should be false and container question dot visible should be true. Now we need to grab a button dot click event for all four of our buttons. In each of these events, call the check user answer procedure. The index argument should match the button. So button one's index is one, button two's index is two, button three's index is three, and button four's index is four. Our clock is there to help us end the game, but we need a one second delay between the very last question answered and when the quiz ends. You might also want to implement this clock in between each question so that you have a one second delay to output right or wrong. In this example, the score is just updated automatically, so if the score doesn't change, the answer is wrong. Once t is greater than or equal to one, we disable this clock, reset t back to zero in case we want to use this clock again. We'll show the game over container and hide the question container. During each clock tick, we need to increment t by one. Our final procedure is going to output the user's grade. When the clock stops, we need to call the get grade procedure. Create a local variable called s and set it to int score dot text. We need to create our grading scale, so we need at least five different conditions. Label grades text will be based off of int score. We're going to use letter grades. The only possible conditions for a letter grade are A, B, C, D, or F. If S is greater than or equal to 90, and if S is less than or equal to 100, that usually constitutes an A. You can just copy and paste this block for every other condition. A B is usually a grade from 80 to 89. A C is usually a grade from 70 to 79. A D is usually a grade from 60 to 69. And anything under 60 is an F. Now keep in mind that I did hard code in that every time the user gets a question correctly, they get 10 points. So it's literally impossible for the user to make an 89 or an 82 or any number that is not a multiple of 10. We are done with the block section. Let's run this app and see what it looks like. All right, the quiz starts and our score says zero and we're on question one of 10. And look, we've got our first randomly generated question, 72 plus 44. We added a cheat mode block that allows us to see the correct answer in the quiz highlighted in blue. And notice that all of the wrong answers are in the ballpark of 116. I'm going to select the correct answer. Doing so gives me 10 points and generates question two of 10, which is 80 times 84. Each time I select the correct answer, my score increases by 10 and I'm given a new question. Now I'm gonna keep hitting button two and pretend like I don't know what the answer is. When I get the question wrong, my score doesn't change and I'm still given a new question. 
On the very last question, there is a one second delay before the quiz ends and my score is represented by a letter grade. If I want to start the quiz again, I can use the built-in menu and select new quiz. And remember, I can hit this menu option at any time to start the quiz again, even if I don't reach the end of the quiz. It's pretty cool, right? And it was really easy to do. All right, let's wrap this up. If you download the AIA file from the Appy Builder community, you'll find some changes were made to screen one. You'll notice these changes allow you to implement a countdown timer during each question. The timer gives you five seconds to answer each question before it automatically moves on to a new question. Your challenge for this video is to figure out what those changes are and understand how that countdown timer works. You'll also see another screen called Ideas with another example of how you could present questions using images and preset answers. If you've been following along with this video, you should have no trouble making the screen work. Don't forget to visit the Appy Builder community where you'll find more tips and tutorials created by community members. That's all for now. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Don't forget to thumbs up the video and have a great day. Bye!